Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour. And uh, we're live tonight, but I'm surprised because we are really uh, snowed in. We're in the refrigerator here in the middle of Arkansas. They're calling it a historic snowstorm. But I know it's, it's over other states besides just Arkansas. Oklahoma had the worst also. But they're calling it historic because it has never been this much snow. We've had over two feet of snow dumped on top of some other snow that hadn't even melted yet. So they're calling it historic, plus the fact that it got down to 15 below zero the other night, the coldest ever for this part of the country. Oklahoma, they said, got down to 31 below zero. That sounds like the North Pole. It doesn't sound like Arkansas. Yeah, or Alaska, so, huh? <laughs> so we're we're in two locations tonight because nobody's going anywhere. Um, I'm in my house, and Julia's in her house. So we're connected via the phone, and we just hope everything's going to work out, and we can communicate in this way. Mm-hmm. But uh, we went on a cruise last week. And we were down in the Bahamas, and it was really nice and warm and we're in shorts and everything. And then we heard that we had the first snowstorm hit while here while we were gone. So we thought, well, we're good, luck, good thing we're down there. Then we were trying to get back, and uh, the flights were all delayed. We were stuck in Miami trying to get home, and we finally made it as far as Dallas, and they couldn't get us any further, and Dallas was even snowed in. They said it snow went as far as San Antonio, and it never goes down there. So this is really a weird winter. Mm-hmm. Well, we were stuck there in uh, Dallas trying to get home, <coughs> And uh, it took us to the next day. We had to stay overnight. And then finally, we did get home, and uh, it had melted enough that we could make it back up to our mountain. And then it was only a day or so later, I think if this is about Wednesday, this, this really deep snow came in. <clears throat> but the weird thing is, in a couple of days, we're going up to 60, so it'll all be gone by that time. We hope. Uh, we hope so. <laughs> but anyway, it, it's strange. She's in her house, I'm in mine, and we're having a little uh, extra time on our vacation, I guess you would say. You may be. <laughs> I don't know what vacation I'm taking. <laughs> so, well, I'm just said, walking everywhere, and I had to get home before it got dark, so <laughs> I'm not walking you, after dark. Yeah, she lives on the same property up here. But it's down in the woods, and she couldn't get her car out because of all the snow, so she walked up to the office Mm -hmm. been working there. But I've been stuck in here anyway. Of course, I'm working on three more books, so I never really get a vacation anyway. I was working on it while I was down on the cruise, too. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, we're trying to do it this way, (laughs) but I know there's other parts of the country that are in snow, too. Because they said there were 30 states that were snow-covered. So this is turning out to be a really uh, bad winter, I guess you would say. Well, maybe just a different winter. Maybe this is Mm. part of the shifting. So it's like, welcome to the shift. (laughs) The climate changing and all of that. Mm. We'll just call it shift. (laughs) For it to be that cold, though, that had to come down so far. That's like part Mm. of the North Pole is trying to move down into our area. Well, it was was an (laughs) Arctic blast. (laughs) It was definitely Arctic. (laughs) Let me give out the toll-free number in case Mm -hmm. anyone wants to call in tonight. The number is 1-888-815-9756. 1-888-815-9756. And, Julie, do you want to explain part of what was happening last week? Well, it wasn't last week. It was the week before, but the last show. Yeah, and, before and we, we went apo- on the cruise. And we want to it's- apologize. Um, it's some of the same stuff that's happening right now, I just noticed. Um, um, we really don't know what was happening, if there was a delay factor in in the transmission so that we weren't quite hearing or we were answering, and then the people on the line weren't hearing us or something, or it was delayed when they did hear us. 
but it was a lot of talking over each other, and it was just, uh, you know, we weren't hearing things very well. So it was uh, a very mixed up uh, show. It probably came across as very mixed up. Um, we were getting frustrated on our end because we couldn't, it's like we couldn't um, talk, you know, something wasn't happening and stuff. So um, we apologize for that, and, and um, um, hopefully it'll be better today, uh, in, especially with these circumstances right now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> But we'll do our best, and we, we're trying to make it to where it's not uh, discombobulated. So, mm. Yeah, it was hard to understand some of the callers, and I think that was right. part of the over-talking each other, you know. Right, and I'd like to explain, I mean, I know... Um, you know, part of my purpose, if people are seeing us on lectures, part of my purpose there is to help translate questions because it is hard to understand everybody all the time. And so sometimes I can hear them better or I can understand what they're asking better and then I just field that out for you. Um, so please don't see me as an interference here. I really do have a purpose. Um, plus, you know, and I've just grown into Dolores' sidekick. And so... Um, you know, uh, hopefully you don't see me as an interference and somebody that's just talking on here. I really do have a purpose. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, you're very important, especially when we're traveling overseas and the lectures and we're in the big halls and things and uh, we're in other countries, the accents that people have. And when you're in halls, everything is distorted, the sound and everything, and uh, it's some terms it's very hard to understand people's questions. So right. mm -hmm. I refer to Julie as my translator. Even mm -hmm. in England, she has to translate the English. Even in the United of, States, I have to translate the English. <laughs> 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 because of the accents and everything. Mm -hmm. But it is more difficult when you're up there on the stage and trying to hear people talking from other parts of the room. So uh, she has an important role. And also in our lectures, she has begun to uh, add a lot of things that are very uh, interesting, too, things that she has come up with and that she's discovering. So she is kind of interweaving with a lot of my work now, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. So uh, I know that's what we heard, that there were complaints, and we wanted to straighten that out. That was what was going on. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so um, I think we kind of got that caught up. Right. But it's mm -hmm. funny to be here in the ice box anyway. Well, it's starting to thaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of all of it anyway. Mm hmm. Uh, and we are going to be gone for about three weeks. Right. I'm going to have to tell you know, the ones who put this on that we won't be mm -hmm. live for, uh, for three more weeks. We could go ahead and talk about that if you want. We could go ahead and, and let everybody know what's coming up and where they are if you want. We were going to do that at the end, but since you mentioned it, we could go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, I was going to try to add it at the end, but mm -hmm. sometimes we're rushing right before they're going to uh, shut the show down. So maybe we better right. talk about it now. Right. We're leaving on Monday, and <laughs> after all this snow... Uh -huh. Tell them the first place we're going to. <laughs> hey, we'd we be going to the beaches of Hawaii. <laughs> it's a we're rough life. We're getting out of the icebox. <laughs> right, we're going to get out life. of the icebox, okay. Yes, uh-huh. Right, tell them we're going to have a, I'm going to have a lecture. We're going to be in Honolulu. There will be a lecture there. Mm -hmm. At what day is the lecture? Is the lecture next is week? on the 16th. That's a Wednesday. <clears throat> and then after that, we'll be having a class. Yes, what of my having, hypnosis? Right, you're what? having hypnosis, and I feel like we're talking over each other again, so there must be that delay. Yeah, because in there. you're not here, I can't tell. Go ahead, right. Mom. Um, yeah, there'll be a, a level one class teaching a Dolores' technique, everything you, you need to know to, to know how to do her technique. And that class will be in Honolulu um, from the, that be Friday through Sunday. There'll be the uh, 18th, or the Whoops, let's see, 18th through the 20th. Uh -huh, and, that, uh, that weekend. Right, that weekend. Now, the lecture, and that's a three-hour lecture. We call it an evening with Dolores, and that's where she'll talk about. You might want to explain what that is, 
Mom. I'll call you okay, Mom. but uh, when I do the <laughs> evening one, you know, I do a lot of uh, talking and things, but also we're always open to questions. Anybody asking questions about my books or anything that I've written about, and there's a lot of different topics. Mm-hmm. But that goes on for about two hours with the lecture and the ask questions and answer, and then mm-hmm. I spend the last hour, we do a group regression. Right. And put everybody in the audience under at one time and take them into a past life. This is very popular. In, I've done it all over the world. In some places, we do it as a workshop, and we spend uh, three hours. It's a whole day, mm-hmm. really, for the workshop, and we do it, uh, different parts to it. But when I'm doing a lecture like this, we just stick with one part. And we take people, a whole audience, back into the, uh, the past life. And it turns into a, a lot of fun. Right. And we've done it everywhere. We did it in Singapore and other. And when I was on this last trip, and we've done it in several cities in Australia. Uh, we, we did it in France and in England. We do it everywhere. Mm-hmm. And people do like it because they can participate in something. Right. And I've gotten emails that said, just that little hour that we did, and it's a very light trance. It's not the deep trance that I use in my work. It's a light trance so that people can uh, remember what they're seeing and they can write it down. But I've gotten emails that said, even in that light trance, the people were amazed that they got a lot of information. Right. Well, you I had one... a lot of information. Yeah, even in just something as simple like that is just like playing a game, really. Right. Mm -hmm. One of the emails, the man said that he'd never been able to be hypnotized, and he was worried about it, but he said he went in there with an open mind telling them, and you know who we mean by them, Mm -hmm. that I want to have an experience. He said, I'm ready to have an experience. And he was amazed that he was able to see things and went into a very significant past life and just that hour that we played the game with the audience. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing this now just about everywhere I go as part of the evening with Dolores Cannon. So in Honolulu, we'll be doing the lecture and the group regression first, and that'll be next Wednesday. Right. And you said you want them to go on our website? Well, all of the information is on DoloresCannon.com. If they just look up events, it'll show where everything is. Uh, But this one is at the Best Western, the Plaza Hotel um, on Nimitz, North Nimitz Highway in Honolulu. uh, But they can get the exact details on the website, or they can call if they don't have uh, Internet access. So. Uh-huh. And but the think, class is also, is also there, isn't it? Yeah, but we don't give that information out until somebody registers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they register so. first. <laughs> okay, but the class is there in Honolulu. Mm-hmm. And then after that weekend, then we come back to the States, but we don't come home yet. We go directly to California. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be doing the same thing in Burbank. Right. California. So tell them about that. And that will be, the talk will be on Wednesday the 23rd. <clears throat> and that will be the same. And that is at the Holiday Inn Burbank Media Center, uh, 150 East Angelino Avenue in Burbank, California. And again, all that information is on the website, DoloresCannon.com, under events. So uh, you, you can register for these talks online, or it'll, you can get definitely get the information of how to call us or whatever you want to do to register. And then the class, again, uh, teaching her technique will be Friday through Sunday, so it'll be the uh, 25th through the 27th. And this, um, in California, we are doing an advanced class, but those are it's only open to those who have already taken the first class. Right, so there's no need to mention it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's why I didn't mention it. <laughs> Unless there's somebody out there who was taking the class and didn't know about it. Well, they, they're they notified. <laughs> Everybody's okay, they been are. Notified. Okay. Yes, uh-huh. And that's and then, turning out it's going to be a big class. It's going to, yeah. And it's, it's always good when you get a lot yeah. of people and they can all mingle together and they, you know, there's a lot of uh, give and right. take. And, right. Actually, uh, both, it, both classes are filling up very quickly. So they're about full. Okay. Mm-hmm. But that'll be the what? That's the 
the last weekend of, what, of uh, February, that's, or what is yes, it? Yes, that's the last weekend of February. It's the 25th through the 27th. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then there's something else that's going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I do a lot of filming. Everywhere I go, doesn't matter where it is, here, overseas, everywhere I go, people always want me to do some filming. And they come to our hotel rooms. Uh, we do it everywhere. Can you? Can I just film an interview with you? And I never know uh, what's going to happen to the interview or where it's going to end up. A lot of them have ended up on YouTube that people mm-hmm. have shot of me, and I never know. I never see any of this until it's done. So uh, I do a lot of that, and I never know what's going to happen to with it. Some of them have ended up in documentaries and some of, on a large uh, the stations on television. And other ones have been put into documentaries that are being shown out there. Well, a month ago, we got this email saying that something that I shot is now in a movie. And the movie is going to be having the premiere there in Hollywood while I'm out there. Uh And they want to know if I wanted to come for the premiere. And I said, well, I'm going to be there anyway. That really works out. I I don't want to come home and get another ticket and go back. I'm just going to stay after the class and stay for the premiere. Now, the, they're calling it a movie. Um, I have the feeling it's a movie along the line of what the bleep or the secret, the way those were put together, where they had interviewed a lot of different people and put it all together. That's what I'm guessing, because I have no idea what they do with this film once they get it done. Uh-huh. I vaguely remember shooting for it when I was out there in Hollywood a year or more ago, and the name of the movie is called Three Magic Words. And I remember asking the guy, what are the three magic words? He said, that's for me to know and for you to find out. He said, we're not going to reveal it until the movie is shown. And I said, okay, but how am I going to know what answers you want, what you want me to talk about? And he said, I'll ask the questions, you just answer the questions, and and then we'll put it all together. So I said, well, I'm hoping that I'm giving them what they wanted. So I have no idea what this is all about, what the three magic words are. And But they said they've already shown it in Japan and in Hawaii, and they said it had a very good reception. Okay. So it's going to be on uh, Friday. What is that, the 4th, March the 4th? March the 4th, uh-huh. Uh-huh. T- tell them the information about that, because the premiere is open to anybody who wants to come to see it. Right. And it's, at, it's at the Harmony Gold Theater. Um, 7655 West Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles, and it's at 8 p.m. is the screening. So, um, and then they have, I think we have a uh, a link on our site, uh, also on our Facebook site, if they want to register for the screening through our site, that'd be fine. Uh, but it's $20 for an early bird to go, or $25 at the door, so... Um, Anyway, that'll be fun. I was just looking and at your picture. You're, they have your picture on here. You're going to be a panelist. I don't know where that picture came from, but it's good. <laughs> well, well, when I saw it, I think it was one that he took. He may have taken it from the film, or he mm-hmm. was taking some still mm-hmm. pictures, too. Yeah, I don't recognize that. It's a good picture. So. Well, one thing I, they want me to do when I come out for the premiere, they're going to have a panel afterwards of the, the ones who were in the movie, I guess the ones who can get there, and they're going to have a panel. Mm -hmm. So I'll be there after the showing. They're going to have the panel in the theater there. Right. So we'll find out what that's all about, but I guess it'll be people asking questions. Mm -hmm. So I'll be there that night on Friday, uh, March the 4th, and it begins at 8 o'clock, doesn't it? Right. The screening is at 8. Anybody in the Hollywood area who wants to come and see it, I'll be there. Right. So it's going to be about three weeks before I get back here, and the snow should all be gone, and maybe we'll go into spring, and we won't have any more winter. <laughs> right. Well, they keep promising an early spring, so we'll. I hope so. <laughs> 
Okay, but so that's the next three weeks we're going to have a lot of events. You know, during the winter, during the holidays especially, is when I kind of uh, hibernate. And I don't try not to go anywhere because uh, it's the difficulty getting out. So it's the only time of the year that I'm not doing these trips and traveling and lecturing and giving classes. So now it starts again, and it's going to be constant now all, the, all through the rest of the year. Right. So I have a lot just, of the things posted, but they're not all posted yet, but uh, a lot are, and so that will give people an idea. Um, I've, I've got it, a lot of it through the summer. And uh, then I'm, so that that'll give an idea. And then I haven't gotten Australia and everything up there yet, but we yeah, are going soon, and, and England also in the fall. So all yeah, as soon out. as we left Australia, uh, they started booking the venues for this this year, 2011. They wanted right. to get them all tied down, so right. we hardly got home when they've already started booking. All that that's in way into November, the whole month of mm-hmm. November and, and October and November. So all of that is already uh, scheduling. One thing they wanted to tie down was uh, November 11, 11, 11. Mm-hmm. And they figured that's going to be a big day. So they wanted to get their venue. They're going to have a uh, conference, and, and I'm going to be there for that. So all of that had to be done a whole year ahead of time. Right. So <laughs> this is going to be a very busy year, and I bet it's going to go fast, just the way 2010 did. Right. It was like the whole year evaporated on us. I don't know mm-hmm. where it went to. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, you had some. But, you had some emails, didn't you, from people? Yeah, or, I had some questions <coughs> that I wanted to bring up. I've been trying to for the last two weeks, mm-hmm. the last two shows. I mean. That, uh, but we got off sidetracked off into some other things. But there were a lot of questions, and some of these are the same questions that people ask all the time. And I thought I had answered a lot of them, but when you keep getting emails asking the same thing, oh, I guess I'm not answering a lot of it. Right. Uh, or or they don't get the information. <laughs> right. or they don't get it anyway. Hmm. But, um,. Oh, a lot of it is the same questions anyway. Well, they, but they're good questions, and so if they yeah, have they are because uh, right. Then there are a lot of other people that that just haven't asked them. That means that there's a lot of people wanting to know that information. So yeah, I tell people we get a tremendous amount of emails, mm-hmm. and uh, you wouldn't believe the amount of emails that are sent to me. And I do read every one of them. I do want you to know that out there. I do read the emails. I just am not able to answer all of them. There are just too many. Uh, Some of them, the ones who are requesting sessions and want help, are passed on to other people who do the bookings on those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the ones and people in the office can answer some of the questions, but it's just impossible to answer them all. So that's why... I pulled out some that were on different topics here to, uh, we can cover that. But if anyone wants to call in, uh, they're free to do it because that's all we're going to do is try to get to these questions tonight. Okay, but I think you did say, and we're going back to um, Australia, we're also going, and New Zealand, we're also going back to Singapore. Mm-hmm. And we're doing a class in Singapore this time, and right. they're trying to set up to go to Shanghai, to China, on the right. same trip. Right. So that's going to be a long trip, October mm-hmm. and November. Mm-hmm. And we'll be doing a lot in England, all over England, I think into Scotland too, aren't we? Um, that It keeps changing. We're, it's a U.K. tour, and it did some more changing today, so I it's still evolving. <laughs> okay, so... That is in the summer, so there's mm-hmm. a lot going on. And then we mm-hmm. have our conference in June. Mm-hmm. And when I get back, we're going to start uh, having as guests on the show. We'll be having some of the speakers that we're going right. to have at our conference. Right, so we might go ahead and give a heads up. That's the second weekend in June, June 10th through the 12th will be the conference. And we are getting some beginning information on the website about it. So, Yeah, I think you've started <laughs> a uh, sending out postcard blast too to tell people the dates. Right. Uh huh. And we're uh, gonna have some wonderful speakers. Right. Oh uh, 
we want to tell them about D. Wallace is one of them. Right. She's if everybody remembers, uh, she's the mother on E.T., so you might remember her from that. She's been in a lot of other movies, but that's what I think we most know her from, is uh, the lovable mom. <laughs> so and she is fantastic. I have heard her radio show, and I have seen some of her, her workshops that she has done. Oh, my goodness, this woman is phenomenal. Uh, and, and she's amazing. <laughs> and she's specializing in healing now, isn't she? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, and so, she, it's, it's fantastic what she does. So. She's our keynote speaker, mm-hmm. and we were advertising we were going to have Arun Gandhi because he's one of my authors. You know, he's the grandson right. of Mahatma Gandhi, and we publish his books. He was set to come, mm-hmm. but now there's a conflict because they've asked him to come to what was it, Zimbabwe? Uh, it's in Africa. I can't remember the the, the state in, in Africa, but uh, to be the guest of honor at a, a function there. So. Um, and yeah, he, about spreading nonviolence. So he didn't know. He felt really bad about it, but he thought it was important because this is going to mostly be focused on the young people mm-hmm. who will be the the leaders of tomorrow. So he thought it was very important to go to that and speak to those people in Africa. Right. right. So maybe we can get him next year. He's as busy right. as I am. <laughs> right. And what you don't know just happened today is we just confirmed with Giorgio Sukalas. So he will be uh, a keynote speaker as well. Or tell him who he is. Okay. He, is, uh, he has Legendary Times uh, magazine, and he is an a, ancient astronaut researcher. Uh, you probably know even more about him. As you might explain more about what he does and everything. But he's, he's, he goes out there, he, and he investigates all the pyramids and the, uh, all the ancient astronauts theories and all of their workings or anything. So this is going to be really cool. He has a whole slide presentation and you know, it'll be very, very fun. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's the real Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. I think I saw an email that um, he was he was what he's the producer and the advisor on an ancient astronaut uh, I think it was a, a, a film or a, a documentary or something that's on TV. And uh-huh. he said it took off tremendously, and he's had a tremendous response on it. Uh-huh. And so that's what been taking a lot of his time. But he does go to these countries, to, and he investigates these things, and he's an expert on it. So he will be taking the place of, of Gandhi, I guess, then. Right. Uh-huh. He will be the speaker on Saturday night. Uh-huh. Yep. So we're, we're, it's going to be fantastic. It's a three-day conference, and it grows every year. We've had over 400 last year, and it's getting bigger every year. And uh, everybody's just been telling us it's the best they've been to. So anyway, you'll be, you check on our website, you'll know more about it. And if you, um, you know, but mostly on that, I guess, we'll be, we'll be sending out flyers and email mm-hmm. blasts to let everybody know what's happening. That's right. in June. Right. And then July, we're going to do an Around the United States uh, lecture tour again. Right. And up into Canada. So anyway, I'm not sitting home twiddling my thumbs. Now everything begins again. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot happening right now. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I've got some of these notes written down here that have to do with these questions that people wanted to know. One, you know, some of these are, I, I, think, I think they're kind of simple, but then that's kind of uh, putting people down because, it's important to them, but I would have thought, well, I thought they would figure these things out, but I guess people don't. I shouldn't have said it like that. Anyway, no. one of the, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> to us, what is simple is not simple to other people who are just starting out in these things. Okay, one of the questions they keep talking about is seeing repeated numbers everywhere they go. Mm-hmm. People said they they see them on uh, signs and clocks and, uh, you know, everywhere. And the numbers are usually 1111, 11, mm-hmm. 1122 are 33. 33, 44, 55, 66. <laughs> but mostly 11s and 22s are right, the main right. ones. And, and they see them 1122 or 1111. 
Mm-hmm. And they keep saying, am I going crazy? Everywhere I look, I see these numbers. I wake up and see the clocks, and it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's reading these numbers out. And they want to know, what is that all about? Well, I thought people knew this is common. Uh, those are the master numbers in numerology. Mm-hmm. If you know anything about numerology, 11s and 22s and 33s are considered the master numbers, the power numbers. And, of course, Doreen Virtue has a part in one of her books all about the repeating numbers, too, right. going all the way up to, I think, 9-9 nine, nine even. 9-9, nine, nine, uh-huh. And explaining right. what they all mean. Mm-hmm. But we're mostly concerned with the, the smaller ones. Now, these, to me, are very important. I see them a lot, too, and I look for them now. I was going to say, if anybody ever knew how much you look for them. <laughs> <laughs> going, oh, okay. <laughs> well, they're there <laughs> because mm-hmm. when I'm leaving on a trip, I'm going to catch a plane, or I'm going to the hotel or the convention center, and I'm going to do a talk. I see them everywhere. I mean, they're on signs, they're on the sides of buses, they're on uh, license plates, they're everywhere. Elevens mm-hmm. and twenty twos. And what that does is tell me, chill out, relax, everything is going to be fine. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the trip, the airplane trip is going to be fine. The lecture is going to be fine. It's just telling me they're there. Mm-hmm. And I consider, like, my guides and guardian angels are giving me signs. Mm-hmm. And tell them what you think, what, how you express it. Well, and what I, what I had read, and, and that's exactly how it feels, is when I, I, had, I had heard it's your guide, guardian, it's whatever. It's a message, definitely. But it's like they're giving you a hug. And that's another way of saying it's they're, they're there, and they're saying it's all okay. But I can feel it when I see it, especially when I just walk in and it's all like 444, four, four, you know, or something like that. That's a major one if it's a triple number. <laughs> you know, it's going, <laughs> oh, okay, really trying to get your attention. And so, um, and I just, I just pause for that moment and, and say thank you because it's like they, they broke through. That, that acknowledges that they broke through, got the message to you that they're there, they're with you, giving you a hug. And it might just be like a high sign, you know, thumbs up, you're doing good, everything's fine, you know, uh-huh. here's your hug. You know, it's, just, it's a very positive message is what it is. That's one of the ways, you know, they have difficulty. We don't listen. We have so many distractions. We don't listen to them, to the messages. We don't, you know, so that's a, that's a real easy way for them to break through and talk to us. It's through numbers. So, mm-hmm. yeah, some to give a high sign. Some of the emails, they thought it was kind of creepy, and they didn't know, what is this? They thought something was wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Am I going crazy or something? And we said, no, it's just a common sign that your guides and guardian angels are there. They're looking out for you, Mm -hmm. and uh, they take care of you. Ah, And the fact that you're noticing the numbers, that means they've got your attention. So Mm -hmm. you are now noticing, and you are getting it. So that's like, to me, it's a prerequisite or pre-step to... The next stage is where you will start communicating. You're, you're, you're opening up your channels of communication is what's happening. So mm-hmm. it's just it's a pre one. You're not aware that it's a that you're opening it up. <laughs> so well, well, Julie is correct too because they're always trying to communicate with you. Mm-hmm. In my work, they're always saying we're here. We're here all the time. Mm-hmm. We never leave you. You're never ever alone. And they try so hard to get through to you. And they try other methods, you know, little subtle methods. Trying sometimes mm-hmm. people think they're coincidences to get your attention, and we just don't pay attention. Right. And um, people say, "Well, I don't, I don't hear them. I don't know what they're trying to tell me." Mm-hmm. They are practically screaming at you most of the time, right. and right. our minds are too busy to pay attention. Mm-hmm. But the numbers are an easy way to sneak it through. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, so I yeah, hope you that... you can't deny the numbers. I mean, especially when you go, what does that mean? I'm seeing all these repeating. Well, then, okay, it got through. It got through. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it made you stop for that fraction of a second and go, I wonder if that means something. Yes, it means something. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, bravo. yeah, you said it is like giving uh, you a hug. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's reassurance that relax. The trip's going to be mm-hmm. okay. The lecture will be okay. The class will be all right. 
And uh, they're kind of, you know, they're patting me on the back saying everything's okay. Right. So Mm -hmm. if you see repeating numbers, that's what it is. They're talking to you. Right. Just say thank you. I know you're there and I appreciate it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Always say say thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Like you said, then you'll begin to communicate more freely with them. Absolutely. Because you've just... You've just allowed uh, the door to open a little bit more when you did that by acknowledging it and, and giving gratitude for it. Mm-hmm. You just opened the door a little bit more. This way they won't have mm-hmm. to scream at you and hit you over the head with something. Mm-hmm. Right. It'd be a whole yeah. lot easier. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, they still may have to because it seems like that's a requirement for a while <laughs> until you finally you hear me. them. But, but this is a beginning. You're seeing that. Okay, you're acknowledging that they are communicating, and so that's where it sh- it can shift from that point. Okay, let you know maybe I'll start listening, you know, because that that's telling you they they are communicating, and uh, then you go to the next step. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the simplest one. Mm-hmm. I just assumed, I guess, that everybody knew that's what the repeating numbers meant. No, and- no, I'm surprised. A lot of people do not know. And and so that's that's why it's good to answer because they and especially when people go does it mean something so they're seeing it and not realizing that yes it does mean something. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, there's another one here that I've gotten several emails about, and I know I've covered this in some of my earlier lectures. But you know, sometimes, and I know these things are in the books, but like you said, there's so much in the books that it's hard for people to remember everything. Right, and you know because you wrote them and you lecture on them all the time. So to you, it's like, well, everybody, I talk about this all the time, but you forget this is new material for most of the people. So, yes, yeah, especially mm-hmm. these ones that said they're just now discovering me. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> so. I'm an overnight sensation after 40 years because of the Internet. I think it's the mm-hmm. Internet generation anyway. <laughs> well, and, and we have a lot of people waking up. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like yeah. you said, to me, I know it, but these are it is new information. They're beginning to ask questions, and this yeah. is good. Right. And they may have even heard it before, but remember, sometimes you have to hear something three times before it makes sense, before it becomes a concept that you get. So, mm-hmm. that's where Be- we, it's okay. We just keep answering. <laughs> so. Be- before that part of your mind acknowledges what it's heard. Right. Okay, well, I think we're going to have, boy, this, this this hour seems to go so fast, but I, this one might be a longer answer, so I'm going to get into it. We get so many calls where people say they wake up paralyzed, especially mm-hmm. when they maybe in the middle of the night or they wake up in the morning when they're first waking up or when they're middle of the night, they wake up paralyzed and they can't move. And, of course, it's terrifying. <laughs> they don't know mm-hmm. what's going on. They think something negative is attacking them, and I hear all this stuff about ETs, and, you know, they must be doing mm-hmm. something to me and all of this stuff. And it scares them because, yeah, it is frightening when something like that happens. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, they blame everything on ETs, and I, I tell them the ETs get blamed for a lot of stuff they don't do. Right. They've got a whole lot more things to be involved with and to trying to figure out ways to pester you anyway. Right. So they are doing half the things people think they are. Anyway, one of the I can explain why you wake up feeling paralyzed like that. Mm-hmm. What people don't understand is that every night everybody goes out of their body. Mm-hmm. Everybody, no exception. Because the body is what gets tired, it's what needs to sleep. The body, the soul, the real you, the soul, the spirit never gets tired. So it would get awful bored sitting around waiting for you to wake up so it could get on with its its life. So when the body goes to sleep, the soul says, "Oh boy, I, now I can go and do what I want to do." And it's, you're off. That's the real you. Is that part? You're not a body. Remember, you have a body. This is your shell. This is your suit of clothes, your costume you're wearing right now to play this part in this play that you're involved with, Mm -hmm. this stage play. That's all it is. It's just an illusion anyway. This is the costume you wear. You have a body. You are not a body. 
The real you is that spark of life, that spirit, that soul, whatever you want to call it. So whenever the body is asleep, you're, you leave immediately. And you're off. You can go all over the world. You can see anything you want. You can have all kinds of adventures. You can go back to the spirit side and confer with your guides and your masters and elders over there and get further instructions. Or you can go off to another planet and see what that would be like. And you have all kinds of adventures when you think you're sleeping. And um, the only way you have people have memory of these things or if they have dreams of flying, or dreams of being in an unfamiliar place, then you may be bringing back some memories of what you did when you were out of the body. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't get lost because the entire time you're alive, your soul, your spirit is attached, assigned and attached to this body. And it's attached by the silver cord. And this is real because some people who practice out-of-the-body experiences, you know, it can be learned. They have seen the, the silver cord trailing behind them. And it's like an umbilical that attaches you to your body. So you cannot get lost. And that umbilical, that silver cord, never severs the whole time you're alive. It severs when you die. When you finally leave the body for the very last time, then that will be severed and you cannot return to the body after that. And the spark of life is gone and the body begins to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. So the whole time you are attached by that silver cord to the body. But you're having all kinds of wonderful adventures. You're all over the place. Another thing people don't realize, and I've written about it in my books, is that many of us are doing work at night when you're out of the body. <laughs> Some people say, I wake up and I'm so tired. What was going on? What happened? Well, you were busy working all night. And some of these are more, I think, would be the more advanced ones. Instead of going out and having fun, they are on assignment. And their job is to help people cross over, to help them to show them the way to go so they can go to the light when they go on the other side. Mm -hmm. And especially if there's big disasters, the tsunamis, the earthquakes, uh, the hurricanes, when many people are killed and they said a lot of them are dying and leaving all at once, mm -hmm. then they have to have people as volunteers to help them to direct them where they're supposed to go. So they're showing them the way. And um, But there's so many of them, you can see there'd be mass confusion. So sometimes the more advanced souls are doing this kind of work at night, and very valuable work. They said it's very important. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can't go all the way to the other side because you're still attached to the human body. But you can show the other spirits where to go because they are out of the body, they can't return, and they're going to the other side. So that's one of the things people are doing, too. So you're doing a lot of very valuable things at night, even though you don't know it. So when all of this is happening, then when it comes in the morning, when it's time to wake up, they reel you in, just like reeling in a fishing um, uh, rod. And you're reeled in, the umbilical, the silver cord is reeled in, and you have to return to the body then. And the p feeling of being paralyzed means that you came back a little too soon and you're not really connected yet. I've had people say sometimes what happened is just right when you're coming back into the body, maybe there'd be a loud noise or something in the house, and it woke them up before they were really connected back. Because the soul, the spirit has to settle back into the body and the brain-body connection has to be all hooked up again before you can move. Mm -hmm. So it may take it a few minutes. And this is a natural part of waking up. You're moving around, you know, and you're starting to wake up. But if you're jolted awake before 
it's all hooked back together again, you will have that temporary feeling of being paralyzed. Now, there's no danger in that. I've had people said they've gone to doctors. One person said they was $10,000 in sleep, um, oh, what do we call laboratory sleep experiments to find out what was wrong with her. Mm-hmm. And if they just understood, that's all it was, was just that the body, you're out of the body and you're coming back into the body, and it takes a temporary lag there so it can be all hooked back up together again. And if you just, you know, calm down because it just takes it a minute and it's all back to normal. You just woke up before it was all hooked back together again. Right, right. And uh, I think that kind of explains it, doesn't it? Right. Another one, I don't know if this is one of your questions or not, but another one along that same line that a lot of, that some people ask is they say they'll wake up with bruises on them and they think they've been uh, manhandled by aliens, and that's along the same um, line of what's happening here. I wonder if you might address that real quick. Well, that deals with uh, when they're having UFO experiences. Well, you said it's the process of when they come back into the body. Yeah, I, because I the settling it, so. back in, too. Right. Because they said even the act of breathing sometimes can mm-hmm. create bruises. Right. It's just that process of coming back in. And if you bruise easily, then you're going to show bruises. So, mm-hmm. And it's not that you necessarily had a UFO encounter. It's just that you were out and then you came back. And it's just, you know, the way it affected you. Yeah, because you, that's, so. mm-hmm. that's another thing. I said they blame it on the ETs, and right. I said, actually, mm-hmm. they've got a lot more going on in their lives. They don't have time to mm-hmm. uh, uh, spend time figuring out how we're going to torment this human here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot right. of it is very natural explanations. Mm-hmm. Now, Also, there are some people who are taught. Some of them do it naturally, but some of them take classes in how to go out of the body. Right. Because they want to do it. A lot of my clients say they, some of them do it automatically, and other ones say they want to learn how to do it. Mm-hmm. And I said, you better be careful what you ask for. But um, I can say, I think it would be an adventure to go out of their body and just go all over the place and be conscious of what they were seeing. When right. They, it's, and, a, it's a conscious awareness, and that's different than what we normally do. So we want to be, you know, some, sometimes that's fun. It's just to be conscious of the abilities that you have, you mm-hmm. know, and, and do these things. So nothing wrong with that. Because the other one is spontaneous. It happens to everybody. And now there's no exceptions. It happens to everybody mm-hmm. whether you know it or not. Right. There's no way you're going to keep it from happening unless you're not and never go to sleep. But mm-hmm. you can't do that. So there's nothing to be feared about it. It's a very natural thing as the spirit releases and goes on its job while the body mm-hmm. is asleep. Right. But there are places that have classes to, to learn to teach people how to go out of the body. Mm-hmm. One of these is the Monroe Institute in Virginia, mm-hmm. and that's very popular. They have um, very intensive classes out there. I was out there one time, I'm trying to think of it's outside of Richmond, Charlottesville, somewhere outside of Richmond is where it is. It's out in the country. I was there, but you're not allowed into the Institute while they're having classes, so I just saw the outside of it. Uh But the Gateway program especially is very intensive, and they teach people uh, how to have psychic experiences and how to have spontaneous uh, out of the body and how to direct it and be able to use it. (laughs) Because Robert Monroe, when he discovered he was having these, he learned how to control it. And he wrote many books on it. And that been kind of the the Bible of the out-of-the-body experiences, I guess you would say. He was a pioneer who first wrote about it and told how to do it. And then he founded the Monroe Institute. And they have tapes that they play to bring the, the mind, the two sides of the brain, I think it's to bring them into sync so that... Um, they're operating together, and they have different ways of doing this. I've never gone and studied it, but I've talked to people who have taken the classes. Uh-huh. And this allows the brain, the person, to have conscious out-of-the-body experiences and be able to direct them. So 
So those of you that are interested in it, these are things to explore. They also have other classes, too, along the psychic uh, uh, events and things. Mm -hmm. But anyway, if you do wake up occasionally paralyzed, believe me, there's nothing out there trying to get you or attack you or anything. (coughs) You're just having a very natural experience. Right. You're just trying to get back into your body. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's all it is. Some people have told me when they have this happen and they're laying there paralyzed, they have the feeling there's other beings in the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, part of one of the questions. They have sensed there's beings in the room, and they can't quite make them out, or they're like glowing uh, energy. Mm-hmm. That's why they think it has something to do with ETs. Right. It's not. Those are your guides and your guardian angels, mm-hmm. whichever one you want to call them. <laughs> right. That's because, the protection that's constantly around you. <laughs> yes, because when you go out of the body at night, you're, you're, you're always protected. You're mm-hmm. never alone. And they go with you, and they stay with you, and they escort you back to make sure you get back into your body safely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of this, it's all natural. Right. Well, and if you saw that, well, then there's your verification. I mean, that, that, that shows you. I mean, if you're wondering who you really are and where we come from, that, there's verification of it right there. (laughs) So, um, yeah, those are your guides. Those are your beings. Those are your everything. So, your protectors. Huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because people, when they don't understand any something, fear comes in. Right. Fear is the strongest emotion that a human has, and if you don't understand something, you bring in that fear, and you start thinking of all these other horrible things that could be going on when actually yeah. it's a very natural. Mm-hmm. simple thing, so just relax. Well, and people have to understand, I mean, that, that's an earth thing, that's a 3D, this level thing, that fear. Um, yeah. There is nothing to be feared. That is totally created on this level. And, I mean, we are so protected. We are so, there's so much light everywhere around us there and it really is nothing to be afraid of there is no fear once you leave this plane it's only here and and they that's like you said just chill out just let go of it because it's not real there's none of it's real it's just there's nothing there and so it's like yeah it's just because you don't understand it that's all it is but if you can let go of that and realize just say okay i just because i don't understand it Whatever it is, I don't understand it. So just allow that to filter in and go, okay, whatever it is, it's okay. I just don't understand it, which is why I want to fear it, but there's nothing to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. So There's always an explanation. Right. If we're coming to time to uh, to sign off again. (laughs) Right, right. But um, I've had some clients that come to me, and they say they're afraid of everything. Yeah, that's sad. And that's (laughs) very sad. Mm -hmm. And that's what I keep trying to tell them. Don't you realize when you're afraid of everything, you're sending out that fear energy. Remember, Mm -hmm. energy attracts like energy. Right, and it creates. It attracts and it creates it. And and people can say, I can show you this evil thing. Well, what they don't understand is that is their fear manifested. You know, that... Don't, Don't be, you know, don't take this fear stuff lightly. That's an emotion. And that creates. And thoughts, I, I, I know it's hard to believe, but <laughs> thoughts are things. Thoughts Absolutely. create. Mm-hmm. So if you're you're projecting fear, you're going to draw to you the very thing you're afraid of because Absolutely. it attracts it to you. And you're going to say, "Oh, see, I told you that was out there. I told you." But you, but what you don't, you have to understand is you made that. You mm-hmm. created that. It wasn't out there until you feared it. So, Mm -hmm. yes, (laughs) so you've got to watch what you think. You have to watch your emotions and what what you do with them. Yeah. This is, there's nothing, there's no room for fear at all. We live in a beautiful, wonderful world, and we're highly protected. You just have to remember that. (laughs) And we're coming to time to stop. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good note to leave on. We are part of a beautiful, loving universe and world. Yes. Uh Yes. (laughs) 
And the numbers verify it, too, repeating numbers. <laughs> That's right. Okay. And, that, and see, a lot of times that is what they're trying to tell you. Yes, yes, yes. We're it's here. all okay. <laughs> so. Okay, so we're going to have to sign off now before they pull the plug. Mm-hmm. And we'll be back alive on March the 11th. Yes. And we'll have a lot to talk about because of all the adventures in the next three weeks. Right. And if you want any more information, check our website. You can, yes. Or you can just type in DoloresCannon.com, and it will take right. you to all the information about the classes, the lectures, and the premiere. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, good night, everybody, and I hope you are all staying warm anyway. Yes. <laughs> good, good night, and thanks for listening. Good night, and manifest wonderful events. <laughs> good night. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos And be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.